On January 17, 2022, Brady Goodwin, otherwise known as Fanatic, legendary rap artist from the Christian hip hop group, The Cross Movement, declared on YouTube in a 24 minute clip that he was denouncing Christianity. Brady was both a graduate of a Bible college and also a very prestigious seminary in the East Coast. And as he shared, as I watched this video, it was painful. He was recalling his journey as a Christian and then now deconstructing and ultimately deconverting. One of the first things he said is that he lost confidence in the Bible. He no longer saw it as the inerrant word of God. He also had this interesting comment. He said, people interpret the Bible like a Rubik's cube. They kind of twist it and turn it however they want, and he just couldn't do that any longer. Unfortunately, many other Christians in the public eye, whether it be musicians or athletes or even pastors, have also lost their confidence in the Bible. I want to share with you a concern that I have. I think that could happen here too. Even at the Bible Institute of Los Angeles, Biola University, 30 units of Bible, and yet people can still have no confidence in the Word of God. This morning what I'd like to do is share with you briefly from a passage in the Old Testament that will hopefully encourage you strengthen you, and restore your faith in the Bible. The title of my message today is The Perfect Law of the Lord. And I'm going to read to you in the ESV translation from Psalm 19, verses 7 to 9. Let me read the Word of God to you. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Father, I pray that our time this morning would not only encourage us, but in some cases awaken us to the promise and the power of the Word of God. Help me now as I teach that I'll be careful and clear, and we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This psalm is a familiar one. It's a psalm of David, known as the choir master. In this, God reveals himself in two ways. Take a look at this. The first is in the first part of Psalm 19, verses one through six is what's called general revelation. Notice what he says in verse one. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. Verse four, the voice goes through all the earth. And then verse six, the rising is from the ends of the heavens. When we come to the second portion, which is our passage today, verses seven through 11, we see now that God reveals himself through special revelation, specifically the word of God. In this, from verses seven to nine, there are six statements that we see. Take a look now. The law or Torah, verse 7a. The testimony, verse 7b. The precepts, verse 8a. The commandment, verse 8b. The fear of the Lord, verse 9a and the rules of the Lord, verse 9b, or otherwise known as ordinances. Why the repetition? Why the parallelism? Well, I think the author is trying to communicate God's intention. God wants to reveal himself both to Israel at the time and to us today. He wants us to know him and then ultimately to make him known. And so he communicates to us clearly and repeatedly so that we would get the point. It's important, I think, for us to get the point. James Montgomery Boyce in his commentary in the Psalms, take a look here, he explains maybe why and what the six terms have in common. 
He says the answer is that they all portray the Bible as words to be obeyed. Did you get that? Words to be obeyed. Because it is the word of God, it was to be received by him and others as authoritative, inerrant, and absolutely binding. One of the things that I'm experiencing as I travel far and wide is that people are attacking the Bible. No, I'm not talking about the atheist. I'm talking about Christians who for some reason now have lost confidence in the Bible. And they say, well, I don't think the Bible really means this, or I, I think probably the author wasn't the real author here, or, or, or maybe that's not what's really meant, and then we genreize it away, or we say it's just a parable. And, and I go, wow, are you serious? They almost treat the Bible as it was fake news, speculation, or another TikTok post. Did you know that people, though, have been trying to debunk and discredit the Bible since its inception? Take a look at this. In 1776, the 18th century French writer and philosopher Voltaire once said this comment, 100 years from today, the Bible will be a forgotten book. Interesting later, 58 years later after his death, his home in Geneva actually was used to print the Bible and even store the Bible. Now in the 21st century, Voltaire is forgotten. Let's go back to our text. How does the word of God minister to us? Take a look here. What was interesting to see as this long list in verses seven to nine was given to us was the construction of adjective and action. Did you get that? Adjective and action. Take a look here. The word of God is perfect, reviving the soul. It is sure and trustworthy, making wise the simple. It is right, and right here doesn't mean just correct. Right can also mean straight, which is an Old Testament euphemism for a virtuous lifestyle. Number four, clean and pure and enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord enduring forever and the rules of the Lord, which are righteous altogether. I've been a Bible professor here since the 90s, so Brandon's right, I'm pretty old. And um, interestingly enough, even though I've been a Bible teacher, I have struggled with reading the Bible. Yes, this is a confession, God. I have struggled with reading the Bible. Because it's challenging, is it not? Even the Old Testament, some of you are, you cringe, old, ooh. I just call it the retro or classic testament, okay? It's the majority of the Bible, it's the foundation of the whole. And if we understand that, then the parts become even clearer to us. My wife, my dear wife, makes me take vitamins. I don't enjoy vitamins. The sheer size of them are challenging for me, and I have to take like 15 of them. I don't think I took them this morning, so, oh boy. What does a vitamin do? It builds us up. But one vitamin by itself will not give you the power. You have to take it repeatedly, continuously, daily, and then you will get physically stronger. During this time of COVID and Omicron, my wife was even more diligent to ask me, please take your vitamins. And she would come home with another bottle. This is another one. I'm like, oh boy. May I suggest to you that the word of God is like a vitamin in that it won't zap you into spiritual strength immediately. But over the long haul, as you are consistently in it, the perfect word of God will revive your soul. The sure, trustworthy word of God will make the wise, and the, making you wise the simple. It will give you correct understandings so that you can rejoice in the truth, not in the fake news that pervades every social handle around. 
It is clean and pure, enlightening the soul. It shares with us and shows us the fear of the Lord, which will help us to endure, and they are ordinances which are righteous altogether. You see, this full description of the word of God gives us not only the quantity, but the quality of the power of the Bible. And this is how the Bible ministers to us. I want to share some final applications, which is actually going to be a lengthier part of my sermon here, to encourage you on where to look. Because again, I'm sure that there may be people here or on Zoom who are struggling with trusting the Bible. So let me give you three application points or action points. The first is this. Ask the hard questions about the Bible and our faith, and then seek the answers. As a professor in class, we like questions. We actually invite that. It would be terrible if I make a statement and everyone just sits there and we're looking and time is passing. No, we need to engage. We need to ask questions. And here's the thing about Biola University. There's some really smart people here. Did you realize that? People who can answer your questions, all the questions that you have. I studied here and did my MDiv as well. And during that time in the 90s, I loved being able to talk to a professor and say, hey, can I ask you this question? And they would smile, they would light up, because that's what professors do. We answer questions. Can I suggest to you three individuals that you may know? Sean McDowell is a great person to talk to. If you haven't been on his website, Oh man, that is an amazing website. He interviews all these people. He does these mini TED Talks. He's cool and he's young. And he's very, very smart. I learned so much by listening to and reading Sean's books. He's an amazing guy. Another person that you may have heard of is a guy named John Marriott. John is a Talbot grad. He's also a professor. He has written a book called The Anatomy of Deconversion. Our pastoral staff went through this the last year, and he talked about what are the reasons that people deconvert, which unfortunately, like the pandemic, is widespread amongst Christendom. People are deconverting. And he explains in his book, The Anatomy of Deconversion, why this happens, how it happens, and also how to potentially prevent it. John's a good friend. He also just wrote a book called Before You Go, which is another practical book. And then this guy, he's little known, but you might be able to catch him sometime. J.P. Moreland, um, pretty smart guy. He would love to dialogue with you. One of the brightest minds in all of Christendom. Certainly one of the five-star generals of our faith. Let me give you a second way that you can hopefully strengthen your faith and your confidence in the Word of God, and that is read books that address doubts about the Bible. This book is one that I highly recommend. It's a new book, it just came out. It's by William Mounts. Some of you might recognize him. He's the Greek guy. He's also a guy who edited part of the ESV translation. The subtitle of this book is Answers to Real Questions and Doubts People Have About the Bible. I have already made Bill Mounts pretty wealthy by giving out so many of these copies of the book. And I would really encourage you to look into it because he deals with real questions. The historical Jesus. He asks questions about extra biblical sources and alleged contradictions in the scripture. Again, there are answers to these questions. You need to look, and the onus is upon you to find the answers. So ask the hard questions about the Bible and our faith, and then seek out the answers. Secondly, read books that address your doubts about the Bible. And here's the last one, which might surprise you. Pray for healing from personal hurt by other Christians. What? Did you hear that? Pray for healing from personal hurt by other Christians. My guess is with a group this size, there are people here who have been hurt by the church. 
I don't mean the pew that you sat on and it hurt you. I mean people. People in the church have potentially hurt you. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because we'll have a wave probably. But I've been hurt by the church as well. Can I tell you my story real quick? It was Christmas Sunday, 2003. I was ready to preach the Christmas message and an elder took me aside and he shook my hand and he said, Ben, it was great having you here. And I said, in the past tense, was. Why did you say was? He said, this is your last Sunday. We're letting you go. Just the backstory. I had been at the church 15 years. I had just gotten engaged to my wife, Jen. My wife and I said, we're going to stay in this church forever. That was our statement. And then we said, unless we get fired. I guess I was a prophet. I don't know. (laughs) But this was right before the message. Just time out here. Please don't drop a bomb on a pastor right before the message. That's just, it just wrecked me. That was my Christmas gift in 2003 for my church. I can't explain to you how hurtful that was. I could not enjoy Christmas for seven more years after that time. But here's what I did that was irrational, but I was acting out of pain. I was part of a Presbyterian church at the time. Some of you are Presbyterian, chosen, frozen, right? And um, Presbyterian churches are led by elders. So I said to myself after that incident, all elders are evil. I actually said that. I, I truly believe that all elders are evil. And, and to, to let you know the extent of the pain, I was teaching New Testament survey class here at Biola, and I was in my New Testament class, and I'm teaching through the book of Revelation. And in class, I said to this class, hey, class, I don't think I want to go to heaven anymore. Could you imagine your Bible professor saying that? I don't want to go to heaven anymore. And everyone was silent. Finally, a brave student said, Professor Shin, why why is that? And I said, well, when I read Revelation, there's 24 elders there. (laughs) I needed serious counseling. I was leaking like crazy. My dear supervisor called me in the office the next day, and he said, well... I heard you don't want to go to heaven anymore. (laughs) He was kind and gracious to me. And it was healing. Here's my point. Hurt can cloud your judgment. Jadedness will make you irrational. And what a dear friend said to me is, how can you know that all elders are evil? Have you met them all? The answer was no. He said, is it possible that just those few elders, they might have been bad? And the answer was yes. God was gracious in that the next church that I went to, which was again Presbyterian, the elders were wonderful. They were nurturing, they were caring, they were giving, and they were biblical. Friends, I share that last story with you because it's possible that some of you have lost confidence in the Bible, not because the facts are wrong, because they're not. It stood this test of time. It could be because you've been hurt. But don't make the irrational jump that I made that all elders are evil by saying all Bible teachers are wrong, all pastors don't know what they're talking about, all the stuff that I'm learning is incorrect. Don't make that judgment prematurely. Take some time to pray. Get healing through counseling, which I highly recommend. As a student, you have access to the Biola Counseling Center. And take some time for God to revive your soul, to restore your heart, and to encourage you one more time. I want to close our time with one central truth, and we'll finish. The Bible is God's clear, comforting, cohesive, and correcting word that perfectly helps us to know him well. One more time. The Bible is God's clear, 
comforting, cohesive, and correcting word that perfectly helps us to know him well. Biola Talbot, my prayer is that you would seek out the answers to your questions, that you would read the material that will reestablish your confidence in the word of God, and that you would get help so that you would not be jaded anymore about God's wonderful, perfect law of the Lord. Discover who you're called to be at Biola University, a leading Christ-centered university in Los Angeles, with programs on campus and online. Subscribe for more of our videos and learn more at biola.edu.